I got a quick question for you guys. Yeah. See, we got this beautiful view here. Yeah. Would you trade that view for money? As in, would you put in a factory, destroy that farmland, uh, cover this whole place in pollution, so that you can make some money and maybe better roads and trains and stuff? No. Uh, uh, well, if I was from a certain part of the world, I think maybe I'd <laughs> consider it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 so we're basically talking about uh, you know this whole situation that's happening in the world right now, where countries are more or less willing to sell their soul for money and mm -hmm. economy. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a tough one. It's a, maybe a little out of our scope, but we're going to try and tackle it anyway. Sure. So let's hit the road. All right. Perfect. Cool. Come on, you big bastard. It's pretty hot, so I think it might be. There we go. All right, let's... Uh-oh. He stalled again. Again. I'm not stalling. It just doesn't want to... Joseph Stalin over here. <laughs> yeah. Gola, 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 gola. All right. I'm Vladimir leaning into these <laughs> corners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of communist leaders, let's talk us here a second, if you don't mind me starting it off. I'm no, really taking it. over this thing. Go um, for it. Uh, so, I, I currently live in Taiwan, and Taiwan has a very interesting problem that it needs to solve, and uh, they just can't seem to figure out how to deal with it. No one can agree on how to deal with the big problem of China, uh, which is a big problem these days. China has a lot of influence, a lot of power that they're really exerting over the region lately with the Nine Dash Line uh, and, other, and other things like that, you know? Um, and so you've got two major political parties in Taiwan, and I might, you know, if there, there's more than that, but the major ones are the Green and the Blue Party. And the Blue Party, the Kuomintang, they are labeled as pro-Beijing. That's not totally accurate. They don't want to unify, per se. They just want to be friendly with China so that China will be a little bit more lenient on them with the economy. Right. Uh, and they won't, you know, try to get some of those sanctions lifted. You know, they do, they host uh, a lot of uh, military drills in the Taiwan Strait. And that's obviously pretty uneasy for Taiwan. Um, and so they're, they're, I guess, to, just to really simply put it, is just to be a little bit more friendly with Beijing to make Taiwanese lives easier. Right. Um, now, the party that's in power now, the Green Party, just has a massive middle finger to China, and they're more pro-Washington, so to speak. They want to work with democratic countries uh, to try and separate themselves from China and claim independence. I mean, they've already claimed independence regardless of the party, but they want to be more... Um, how would I put that? Like, they want to be more of an independent state than they don't want anything to do with China, basically. Right. Internationally right. recognized as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so you've got this big problem, right? And now, lately, uh, the Green Party is losing a lot of uh, influence. People aren't exactly too happy with the Green Party. It's kind of, whoa, a squirrel! Almost hit it. <laughs> okay, <a> squirrel, <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. I, it, 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 it seems to me the most Taiwanese people I meet, I meet are not hardcore blue or hardcore green. They seem to be split kind of down the middle. They can't really figure out which one's better. It seems to be, you know, depending on the season, they'll just choose one political party over the other. Um, but now the Kuomintang are coming back in powder, and there's this, uh, the mayor of Kaohsiung is starting to uh, run for the Kuomintang party, and he's looking like he might get elected, but he's super pro-Beijing. And what Winston was talking about earlier is should kind of Taiwan sell its soul to have a better life so that because for, for, you know, China to allow them to have a better life, so to speak. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah, this is a tough one, you know, where I'm from in Africa, I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're talking about, it, it's not just China we're talking about here, but I, I guess that is the biggest player at the moment because China's like the neo-imperialist, isn't it? Yep. Going around yeah offering money for resources and setting up infrastructure and pretty much destroying the environment wherever they go, which is an unfortunate thing. Um, I've seen that happen one hell of a lot. Is this, I think we're going right here, eh? Yeah. Yes, 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 we go right here. Um, in Africa, I've seen it really kind of destroy a lot of countries in a, in a bad way because it's a bad mix, you know, China, the way China works is uh, corruption, cronyism, you know, 
knowing people, connections, Guanxi, that's how the whole place runs. And yeah. you know what? Africa is exactly the same. So you put them <laughs> together and all you end up with is this huge little party where the sort of top officials and stuff... Oh yeah, this is what you were talking about, eh? Yeah. Where the top officials, what they do is they all get together, they all live this lavish lifestyle, they've got tenderpreneurship, they all give tenders to each other, they all get lots of money, fancy cars, holiday homes, etc etc but the the money kind of all disappears into this crap rather than where it's supposed to go so you do end up with beautiful countryside being stripped bare strip mined for gold forests being cut down animals being you know decimated because they have uh, tcm you know properties oh, yeah. you know that kind of crap so um i've seen africa sell its soul to china um you know basically for money so wh where else how about you simo what about uh I think a good example is uh, India. This is a country that hasn't bought into the fact that I can have quick development with a one-party state corrupt government, right? It's got corruption, but it's trying to follow the democratic lead of the West, right? It has British rule of law, and yes, they are growing slower. However, when you look at countries like, like in Africa, like you're talking about, you have these, these economies that are just in dire straits. And then you have these leaders that were not fairly elected and they want a tight grip over their country. And what better example of that than China? They've pulled it off. They became a fairly middle-income country with its own wealth of problems, but they've managed to pull it off and get a lot of people super rich. So yeah. they're going into this situation being like, listen, we can get infrastructure, we can get railroads, we can get all this stuff, and I can hold power over my country, and everyone else actually might get a modicum of wealth. So they'll shut up, basically, about it, right? And the heroes of the Western world, you know, giving aid and doing all these real actual aid projects. A little tidbit for you. Do you know that, you know, even with the Belt and Road and stuff, Japan has more infrastructure projects around the world than China. Really? Yeah. And yeah. they just don't brag about it, you know? Yeah, also, you... <laughs> someone also told me that there are more millionaires in Japan than China. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because of all the old money. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it makes anyway, sense. long story short, you have these dictatorships basically propped up. Wealth yeah. comes in, and they're selling out for a very quick taste of the of the good life, basically, right? And it's difficult. Like, it's difficult to be the India of this situation because it's poor, right? Sure. It's got a lot of niggles. It's got a lot of bureaucracy and stuff that actually needs checks and balances. And when you wipe that away, on surface, it actually looks like it's it's doing well. China's booming, right? Sure but it comes at such an environmental and moral cost, you're setting your country up for political disaster in the future, and it's already getting complaints from these, you know, very very newly entered Belt and Road Initiative countries that are saying, listen, our, our trees are gone, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. I'd yeah. like to, to add on to this, maybe diverge a little bit away from this, uh, this train of thought. I wanna talk about foreign aid for a moment here. Okay. Okay, because it's something that China doesn't seem to do. Right. Am I wrong in saying that no, China you're absolutely correct. doesn't do this? I mean, this? they try to make it seem like they do with Africa, but I don't know if that's foreign aid and more maybe like uh, extortion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's true. Because, um, you know, there's that clip about that racist Chinese guy in Kenya or whatever. And he's yeah, yeah. You don't care. I don't belong, belong to here. I don't like here. Like a monkey people. I don't like. Talk with them. Smell is bad. And poor, mm. and foolish, and black. Who like them? Why not the bright, the bright people, like the American? Then why are you coming to do business in Kenya if we are poor, for we money. are black for money? Yeah. Why why is it that you need our money? Mm. Mm. Money is important. Money is important. Sure. Why not? But why why, why don't you why, why why don't you go and look for money from the uh, fellow whites? Why are you coming to Africa? Where we, like specifically Kenya? Okay, we are okay. black. We are this, poor. This is for others. Mm. Why, why? Why are you coming for our money? If we are poor, why don't you give us the bikes for free? Why are you exchange? Yes. U.S. U, the U.S. Mm -hmm. has U.S. aid. Mm -hmm. They give us donations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we are poor, you should be giving us these motorbikes for free. Mm. You donate for free okay, because oh you don't expect you money show. from poor people. America gives us financial aid all the time that right. you know they're kind of used to getting handouts from the West from America Australia the UN you know the uh, you know I grew up with all these like UN initiatives and stuff whatever you call them what was like UNTAG or whatever you know like all these 
things in Africa when I was growing up where it's like the United Nations and NATO and all they're coming in but they've got the the Peace Corps and the this and the that set up in all the African countries constantly vaccinating children giving free aid and uh, you know hospitals without borders doctors without borders and stuff all going into Africa and actually helping and not trying to get anything in return you know what I mean yeah um, but China doesn't seem to do that at all no, um, China's all business yeah it's all about business and yes they'll help you out but they want something in return you know it's uh, like that on every level even if you want to zoom in on the resolution there even like if you want to meet friends with someone from China if they do something nice for, for, for you they absolutely yeah. expect it back oh, well, yes. well listen it's like this like the West has a lot of allies we help each other out right China has no allies, it's got no friends, and it's already, that ship has sailed. Nobody, nobody looks at China like some sort of bastion of freedom and hope of the future, right? People, people are skeptical and terrified of China. And yeah. so the only way they can actually get allies is forcibly, so that's why you look at debt traps and things like this. Yeah. You no. have to be an ally of China when they own ports in all of your entire economy. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely, and a lot of, uh, some of my Ty Taiwanese friends want to go live in America, when I ask them why, that's the reason they're terrified of Chinese control. Um, and it doesn't matter which way you lean politically in China, most, uh, in Taiwan, pardon me, uh, you can't really lean any way in China, but <laughs> in, ta in Taiwan, uh, no one wants unification, well, virtually no one wants unification with China. I'm kind of proud of them for that. I'm kind of proud of the Taiwanese for sticking up to such a large and powerful force that China's become. Right. Sure. They have right. balls so, to do that. Yeah, and I mean, look, at the end of the day, this, this is such a weird situation we find ourselves in because China's uh, economic miracle has been brought about by uh, many different factors but a big factor of course is the fact that everybody decided they're going to work with China they're going to yeah. set up factories in China they're going to do this kind of thing so China's gotten to where it is right now with a lot of help but they don't seem to want to admit that. They just want to think it's all their own one-trick yeah. pony show, you know? Deng Xiaoping just, did it all by himself. Yeah, right. it's just like China just had this amazing thing. And another thing that really annoys the crap out of me is that whenever you hear about China, any criticism towards China, they're like, economic miracle lifted a billion people out of poverty. But no one ever seems to state the fact that it's them that put them in poverty in the first place. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's literally, you know, I've said this freaking before, but like if I cut myself with a knife and then I like put a, I don't know, a bandage on it, am I, are people going to pat me on the back like, well done for healing yourself. You're awesome. <laughs> you know, shouldn't they be like, you dumbass, why'd you cut yourself in the first place? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, that's always been something that's boggled my mind, that everybody seems to forget that all the problems of China are pretty much self-made. Look at yeah. China. They did it. They pulled it off, you know. Yeah. Not yeah. The, the world's biggest mass murder in history that plunged the country into absolute poverty. Yes, and starvation. Yeah. And, and that's the course, same political like, party today. The, you know, the best way to stop starvation in a country is to let everyone starve so there are not that many mouths to feed. I think there that's, you, you know, that's how you get people out of Minus starvation. 80 million. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. And it's so funny <laughs> listening to the excuses for that. It's like if I ask them what they think of Chairman Mao, a lot of Chinese people would say, well, well, he made a lot of mistakes. It's like, that's a pretty big friggin' mistake to kill power many millions of people. It's not an oopsie. You it destroyed is. the entire country, the, like one of the oldest civilizations in the universe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's unfortunate because it's built into uh, the education and stuff to basically praise him and like overlook his his right. massive big problems. That's <laughs> just little mistakes. Oh, everybody makes mistakes, you know. Right. Uh, poor guy. Uh, yeah, poor guy. He's such a nice guy. Without him, you know, they they love to go on. Oh, without him, China, the new China wouldn't be where it is. It wouldn't Freaking have existed. Freaking bald ass looking bird's nest uh, well, hair I mean, looking at, pedophile. <laughs> at the at the end of the day, though, look at Taiwan. Mainland China could have been like Taiwan, so it would have been better. They wouldn't have destroyed their culture. And don't don't give me the size shit. Yeah, the it's size not about issue. size. Oh my god, oh, we have more people. That's the excuse for everything. Yeah, yeah. China is so big. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's so big. So it needs chaos and famine. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. <laughs> what the hell? This has become a whole other video. Now. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we kind of had to end it off on that because I'm yeah. sorry, but it's just getting to me because we're talking about this whole like money and yeah, yeah. China. China's rise and all that and everyone keeps going like look how well they did but everyone keeps forgetting it's that they screwed it up in the first place right yeah. and they love to blame it on uh, the opium wars and whatever else like hundreds of years ago but no I'm sorry that doesn't fly no nope. again it's like I I 
became an alcoholic and beat my wife and then I decided to stop drinking and everyone's like look at this guy he's so awesome he stopped drinking yeah but what about the part where I beat my wife and I murdered just my neighbors yeah let's just forget that part you know no he's a scumbag right. you know <laughs> anyway enough on that I just uh, thought I'd throw that in there anything okay. you'd like to tell our subscribers before we sign off there whether you remember what this topic was or not <laughs> I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Uh, let us know what you think below, because actually I completely forgot. Um, yeah. But I thought that was fairly entertaining. And yeah. uh, don't forget to tune into ADV Podcast and subscribe to that channel as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can I do another pun? Yeah, yeah, go for it. All right, whether you lean green or blue, remember that we love you for being a subscriber. <laughs> nice. There you go. That's I'm, pretty I'm, good. That's I'm pretty catching good. on to this whole thing, boys. Yeah, that's yeah. no, pretty good. <laughs> Could have maybe mixed it up a bit as well. Like, if you lean green or blue, um, as long as you lean around some corners. You nah, don't self seal his <laughs> That's <laughs> awful. That was, I screwed that up. I screwed that up big time. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't what matter. What are you, Chairman Mao? No, I don't know. It doesn't matter where you've been, as long as you don't lean green. Or if you do, <laughs> then you should lean blue. I don't even know. Which one's the blue one again? Can we stop? down pro debating. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Lean green then. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> green's good for the environment, literally. Yeah, yeah go green. <laughs> I'm going to have so many Taiwanese people from my channel come on here and yell at us for like... <laughs> nah, yeah, they're yeah. nice. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. Anyway, cool, guys. Uh, yeah, stay awesome. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, every single Monday, another ADV China video right here. Same time, same place. On Wednesday, you can check out Laowa 86, 1 p.m. EST. And Friday, just in time for a beer going, check me out on my channel, Serpent ZA.